My team and I work with the community and the local health services to monitor constantly and to respond to any case of paralysis. If we think we found a polio case, we quickly send a sample to a lab for confirmation so we can stop a potential outbreak. <laughs> We test samples from cases of paralysis to see if there's any polio present. We also test samples from the environment to get a complete picture of where polio might be circulating. These laboratory data inform public health actions to respond quickly to outbreaks and protect children from polio. Before we start any campaign, we must engage with community leaders. I visit the household. It is important to hear their concern and clarify their doubt and motivate them to vaccinate their children against polio. पोलियो के कतरे पिलाने की मुहिम के दौरान मैं अपनी टीम के साथ घर घर चलती हूँ खानदानों से मिलती हूँ और उनके बच्चों को पोलियो के कतरे पिलाती हूँ पोलियो को कम्युनिटी में फैलने से रोकने और बच्चों को मजबूत और सेहतमंद बनने में मदद देने का वाहिद तरीका पोलियो वैक्सीनेशन है आपके ताउन से हम पोलियो का खात्मा कर सकते हैं And welcome to the Rotary Club meeting for November 2nd, 2022. And the, we just passed World Polio Day. And as you know, our club has been very active in polio. We have provided over 275,000 inoculations to people worldwide just from our club alone. And I think that's pretty cool. And we will continue to give to polio uh, until it is eradicated from the world. And so that's World Polio Day, a little video to give you an update on what's going on. Hey, so we get lots of stuff going on in the Rotary Club of San Dimas. Let's see, three things I want to mention. First off, Steve is officially registered for pets. Yay! Yay. <laughs> pets is president-elect training seminar, which means that in a very short period of time, a very short, well, this over six months, I will be off the hook and Steve is on the hook as president of the club. And that's a pretty cool thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, also, the Marine Corps dinner is coming up. That is our benefit dinner to support uh, the Making Spirits Bright program, which provides Christmas gifts to enlisted Marine Corps personnel at 29 Palms and Camp Pendleton. And that dinner is a week from tomorrow. It is sold out. Hurrah. Also, the program is at the printers. Hurrah. All the pieces are in place. And anything that can go wrong will go wrong, but Glenn and I are set for it. That's going to be a great dinner. It will be filmed, and we'll put it up on the web for everybody to see, those of you who could not make it. Lastly, before we go around the wheel to see who's here today, the raffle is rapidly coming to a close. It is exactly one month from the drawing. Sell your tickets. Everyone was given 100 tickets. Uh, I just I just sold my 500. I sold $200 to the Rotary Club of Bellflower. Uh, and I just received another 300 cash. So we've got sales going. I need you to get out there and sell those raffle tickets so that we can have our great fundraiser for the year to fund all our other activities. Lastly, teacher mini grants. Applications are already coming in. That's pretty cool. So we'll talk about that later at Action 360. Let's go around the wheel and see who is here today. So let's begin with Marianne. Are you there or are we just looking at your house? I am here. Introduce yourself. Thank you. Marianne Kistler. I am the current foundation chair. I have been in Rotary over 25, 30 years, and I'm always glad to be involved with Rotary. Thank you so much, Marianne. I know we're excited to see you at the Marine Corps dinner. Uh, and she said that she was going to drag Terry there no matter what. Isn't that right? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. How about Mike? How about you, buddy? 
Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Mike Wallace. I'm the president of Better Home Financial uh, Mortgage Brokerage here in downtown San Dimas. I have been a Rotarian for about seven and a half years, uh, past president, uh, past treasurer, and just happy to be here serving the community. Excellent. And Glenn Johnson. Glenn Johnson, member of Satellite Rotary Club. Thank you, Glenn. Short and to the point. Uh, Steve. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Steve Scott, current secretary of the club. Uh, next president, as Raymond likes to remind me. Um, I did find out last night that September 1st of this year made 13 years for me as a Rotarian. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I am a State Farm agent in San Dimas. Excellent, Steve. Well, we're glad you're here and we're glad you're going to pets. Um, we also have Jacqueline Ness with us. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us today. I'm with uh, City of Hope. And I'm in basically in the business development department. I'm a physician liaison. Um, so we're happy to be here and thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Uh, at the City of Hope, Dr. Susan Nianzi has managed a self-management lifestyle program for patients and for communities of color in the catchment area around the City of Hope to aid in reducing health inequities that many of these communities face. She hosted a healthy lifestyle cooking show with our executive director of hospitality and culinary operations. Additionally, Dr. Nianzi has developed evidence-based curriculum and strategic plans to help address health inequities and social detriments in health and health in communities of color. Dr. Nianzi has presented at local and national conferences, seminars, and support groups. She advocates for policies that affect those with chronic conditions. She writes on prevention and public health in local and national magazines. As an assistant professor, Dr. Nianzi has taught doctoral level students public health policy and management, public health leadership and systems, and design and analysis of community trials. Currently, she serves as a dissertation mentor guiding adult learners through their dissertations. Uh, Dr. Nianzi has worked at the local health department where she developed and implemented community-based interventions in the most vulnerable communities. And she is a board member of the Scleroderma California Foundation. Dr. Nianzi is a master Certified Health Educator Specialist, a member of the American College of Sports Medicine, the Royal Society of Public Health, and a Master Certified Gluten-Free Educator. In her spare time, there can't be much of that, uh, <laughs> she, you can find Dr. Nianzi in the kitchen hacking gluten-free, dairy-free, and corn-free recipes. Welcome to the Rotary Club of San Dimas. We're so pleased to have you here today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm so glad. I hope this presentation will be meaningful to a lot of people. I've tried to make it interesting with colors and um, I've got questions in there as well. Um, you could answer them if you would like, uh, but I give the answers afterwards as well. Okay, so I think I need to share screen and then share my presentation, right? Yes, it is enabled, go ahead, go right ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, great. And I will start. Okay, so we've gone through all of that, which was long. Um, so a lot of people who are going through pain, we usually hear from the providers or from family and friends, you know, it's all in your head. The pain cannot really be that bad or you have to live with it, or it's a natural part of getting old. And actually quite a few people think this is true. It's not true. Uh, from what the research is saying, pain affects more Americans than diabetes, heart disease, and cancer combined. The American Pain Society estimates one in every four person receives proper pain care right? Only one in four. So that means there's a whole bunch of people who are not get, getting the proper pain care that they need. So the goal for nutritional care to help with pain management is really a public health approach. We want to decrease the frequency and severity of pain. We want to increase quality of enjoyment of life. We want to increase daily activity levels. And by the way, when you increase your daily activity levels, 
that's going to decrease a whole bunch of pain. And it's also going to decrease the medication that you're taking to reduce your pain. And then also we want to empower patients to be their own advocates. So let's talk about established relationships. What is the research showing? What do we know already? So what we eat and can affect how we feel. So I know there's a lot of people who are Starbucks people. I used to be one of them. Um, but there is, so I'll put it to you as a question. If you had a frappuccino, and I think that's one in the picture there, versus a bowl of blueberries, how will you feel, oh, let's say an hour later, if you had a chronic condition? Actually, you don't have to have a chronic condition if you were also okay. If you had a full frappuccino and then a bowl of blueberries an hour later. Well, research is showing because the frappuccino is high in fat, saturated fat, high in calories, high in processed sugars, you're gonna feel crappy. The body is gonna be achy, painful, Whereas if you had a bowl of blueberries and we want organic blueberries, um, your body is going to feel differently. It's going to give you more energy. You're not going to be in pain as much. So uh, you'll have a better day. Okay, that's number one. Second one. So if you have an apple turnover, the pastry, and a real apple, 30 minutes later, how are you going to feel? Well, with the real apple, you're going to feel 10 times better than the apple turnover pastry. The apple turnover pastry, high in sugar, and I'm sure high fructose, uh, high fructose, what is it? High fructose, um, ah, it's gone out my head. The, the, the really processed sugar. Oh, corn. Yeah. So that's the one you want to avoid, but it's in all the pastries, by the way, to make it nice and sweet and then have you addicted to them. And uh, then it's also very processed. Um, so not a good thing. So with chronic conditions, food can affect what you eat. I mean, food can affect how you feel. So here's another example. So I've got a picture of a hamburger here. I know it might look really good. And I used to eat those in my 20s. <laughs> Can't do that anymore. Um, versus a salmon salad. Well, the hamburger, saturated fat, you can totally see it. It has the cheese. They've got fat in that burger. They've got um, mayonnaise, all, all processed things, high in saturated fat. Whereas the salmon, it has the good fat that we like. So the salmon salad is gonna make you feel better and it's gonna help with rheumatoid arthritis if you do have rheumatoid arthritis. Actually, if you have any chronic conditions, the salmon salad, you won't get pain compared to if you ate the hamburger. That's also gonna be the same with instant oatmeal. I know, instant oatmeal, nice and quick, put it in the microwave, it's ready, versus the stove cooked oatmeal. And of course you can put nuts and raisins in there. The instant oatmeal over processed. So nothing good comes out of the instant oatmeal. I'm pleased if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. Um, so now this is a list of the beneficial diets. So of course, the vegetarian diet, which is going to be the plant-based, it's high in fruits, veggies, nuts and grains. That's what we want. And it's low in saturated fats. Again, exactly what we want. Then we have the Mediterranean diet. That too is low in saturated fats, and then it's high 
in polyunsaturated. Polyunsaturated, those are our fats. So we like those fats. And it's also <laughs> high in grains. Now, they used to call it the Eskimo diet. This is the one that is high in freshwater fish. And I've got an acronym there, SMASH. And that is the fish with the highest amount of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are our friends because they're anti-inflammatory. So I've written out what SMASH stands for, salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, halibut. It doesn't mean you've got to eat all of them. Just pick one or pick two. And then during the week, eat your fish um, uh, twice a week. So if you eat fish twice a week, these ones particularly, you'll get a good amount of omega-3 fatty acid or the recommended amount of omega-3 fatty acids. So all these diets, the three I've gotten here, they're going to decrease the inflammatory response. So pain usually comes from foods that increase inflammation. So if we eat these foods, the plant-based, the fish, that's going to decrease the inflammatory response. And then that will decrease pain. So that will decrease pain in cancer, diabetes, heart disease, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and other chronic conditions as well. So here's another picture showing how it works. So if for breakfast you have the frappuccino, you think, well, I just feel crappy for a couple of hours. Then for lunch, you go to in and out That was my favorite. Um, then you feel, oh, I should be okay in a couple of hours afterwards. Well, not really. What these foods do, they trigger what they call arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is not our friend. Arachidonic acid opens the pathway to pain. So saturated fats, processed foods, high corn uh, syrup, fructose syrup, all of that are going to trigger the arachidonic, arachidonic acid, and that's going to cause pain. But of course, there's an alternative. Your fruits, and I've got the vegetables here, and I also have the fish, the smash, which I've told you, they block the arachidonic acid pathway. And they open another pathway that causes relief. And so that's why these foods reduce uh, pain or that's how they reduce pain within the body. So besides inflammatory pain, and this is what we've been talking about, are there other types of pain? Yes, they are, we'll go through them. Is it important to know the type of pain I have? Absolutely, because then you'll take, you can, you, if you need to take medication, you'll take the right medication, but you'll know what foods to avoid and which ones to eat. And can what I eat affect the different pain types? Absolutely, and we'll touch on that. And then we'll also touch on how it works. So here is uh, a flow chart. And I'm gonna ask questions, so I'd like you to memorize this now. No, 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 kidding. Um, but it shows you all the different types of pain. So if you have chronic conditions, or if you have cancer, or if you know someone who has chronic conditions, or if they have cancer, they're going to have most of these types of pain. Right? So there's somatic pain, there's visceral pain. And I've put the conditions that are going to have both of these pains. Cancer is in there. Another one that is in there, it's, uh, they call it Crips. 
they feel all five types of pain on a regular basis. So that's pretty bad. Uh, but I've also put other conditions in there, scleroderma, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis. And then there's uh, neuropathic pain. This is pain from the nervous system. So a lot of these chronic conditions are going to get it. And another one is pain from the sympathetic system. So this one is... Um, <clears throat> depending on how the sympathetic system is working, uh, it can cause pain as well. So imagine someone with rheumatoid arthritis or someone with fibromyalgia or someone with cancer, and they have all these different types of pain. So they're not going to be very happy. Um, so we need to be understanding and, and, and know you know, they're trying their best, but there's more than one pain that they're feeling. And so we need to try and help them out on that. Okay, so now let's look at some of the foods that can work with somatic pain. So that will be your anti-inflammatory foods. So we talked about omega-3 fatty acids. Those are our friends. They're anti-inflammatory. So if you have inflammation, they're going to calm that inflammation down. We talked about the freshwater fish, smash. And the picture there actually is a fish dish. So you can make fish look good and taste good. And another one who, another food that is high in omega-3 fatty acids are nuts. So you can snack on nuts. You know, in the morning, take a handful. In the afternoon, usually three o'clock, that's when everybody starts feeling a bit drowsy. Um, nuts will be a good pep up and you're doing something good for the body as well. Other, another anti-inflammatory nutrient is vitamin C. That's an easy one. All of your berries have vitamin C. So take a couple of those berries, strawberries, blueberries. I didn't put blueberries there, but they're also yeah. high in vitamin C. And then you can also do cantaloupe or even oranges. Bell peppers are a great one. So is broccoli and spinach. So in reality, vitamin C is in your fruits and vegetables. So a good serving of that at breakfast, lunch, and dinner and you'll get the, the amount your body needs. Another nutrient is vitamin E. That one you'll get in your flaxseed. Flaxseed, you can find it ground, and then you can add it to your oatmeal in the morning. And of course, sunflower seeds. That one you can do as snacks during the day. Um, and then also almonds, right? Coming from your nuts, that's a good pep me up in the morning and in the afternoon, and also <laughs> using vegetable oil for the cooking. I know that most probably there's some cooks here who would like corn oil, I think, and then peanut oil. Yes, once in a while, but if you can stick to the vegetable oil, <laughs> like olive oil, that will be fantastic. And also nuts another source of vitamin E. So really, if you look at all of what we've talked about, nuts seem to be the main thing that has a bit of everything. Um, and again, your, your fruits and vegetables as well. Okay. Another one that is really good is magnesium. Magnesium has been shown in the literature to reduce uh, pain, somatic pain. And that you're going to find in your fish, your nuts, your fruits like bananas, and then also spinach. I know a lot of people might not be too friendly with spinach, but I've got a picture here of how you can spice it up. You know, add in some vegetables in there, add in more spices in there, um, and it can be appetizing. So foods to avoid with somatic pain. That's going to be your pro-inflammatory foods. 
So, and I used the picture as well. So anything with saturated fat or that is processed is going to be a no-no. We've got chips, we've got pizza, we've got donuts, we've got hamburger, we've got candy. I know it might be all the good stuff. But that was the good stuff when you were in your teens and 20s, but not now. <laughs> you had the hormones raging, which was helping to get rid of this. But now we need to kind of put those aside. Um, and I've also put the hamburger there. Now you can make your own hamburger. Um, and when you make it, it's going to most probably have less saturated fat than what you get at um, Burger King or In-N-Out. Okay, any questions from anybody or we're good? Okay, I'll keep going. So now let's look at uh, neuropathic pain, pain coming from the nervous system or from the nerves. So you want to eliminate foods that are going to cause more neuropathic pain. So that's going to be your artificial sweetness and flavoring. You know, if you like sugar, just go for the sugar. Don't go for the artificial sweetness. There are so many things wrong with it. Um, just go with the natural stuff. And of course, the artificial flavorings. This you're going to find in a lot of sodas, processed foods. Um, so you want to avoid foods that have the artificial flavorings. And it also sounds weird. How can you have an artificial flavor in the actual food itself? That also doesn't quite sound right. And I know there might be a lot of people who like dairy, but we want to eliminate dairy from cows. <laughs> so, but I'm going to add, there's a whole bunch, the industry has grown, put it that way. So there's non-dairy um, things that are good for you versus the real thing. I know people might say, well, it doesn't taste the same. Well, it's almost there. So there's non-dairy ice cream. There's non-dairy cheeses. There's a lot of non-dairy options that you can try. How do I know? Because I do non-dairy. And I've been doing it for years. The other one is gluten. So that might be hard for a lot of people. So gluten, you're going to find it in wheat, barley, rye, and regular oats. By the way, the gluten, the gluten in wheat, barley, and rye is not the same as it was uh, pre-war times. The gluten in these foods now is five times more compared to what it was pre-World War II. So a lot of people are now um, uh, testing uh, for celiac, which is the autoimmune condition that uh, gluten causes. But besides that, you can also become gluten sensitive. So you want to, I know, is, you're going to find it in your breads, in your pizza, um, in all of those types of foods. But again, there's gluten-free options, which are a lot better and healthier. Um, so that those are uh, other options as well. The other thing that's going to cause neuropathic pain, high sugar products. So this is your canned fruit, your artificial juices, and then your sodas and your baked goods. The baked goods are so processed there's really no nutritional value in them uh, and then the canned fruits there's so much sugar in there um, as well and that's the same with the artificial juices and those who like sodas kind of look at the ingredients and see how much sugar is added in there uh, the other thing to avoid is saturated fats saturated fats are really not good for anything um, so th these are going to be from your commercially baked and fried foods and definitely from the fast foods. By the way, a lot of the fast foods 
they add saturated fats uh, because that gives uh, a better feel in the mouth. And it also uh, uh, makes the food taste better in a way. So that's their little secret. Just pile on the saturated fat. And of course, we don't like that. Uh, besides causing neuropathic pain is going to increase your risk for heart disease, diabetes, and a whole bunch of other chronic conditions, including cancer. Okay, so foods that have been shown to decrease neuropathic pain. And again, I'm kind of bringing it back up again, plant-based foods. So plant-based foods are going to decrease your neuropathic pain. And I've got pictures of some of them. So with the pasta, to make it plant-based, you can, I've got definitely tomatoes. There are compounds in tomatoes that have anti-cancer properties and also have properties in reducing pain as well. And to make it a healthy option, because I was talking about uh, removing the wheat or the gluten free, uh, uh, yeah, removing the wheat, so you can have the gluten-free pasta. They even have pasta made out of a whole bunch of different foods now that uh, you can try. Uh, and then I have a picture of uh, the red kidney beans. Try to not look at the sausage that is in there, but <laughs> there is um, a uh, red kidney bean stew. Um, Red kidney beans have been shown to re reduce neuropathic pain, and they're actually a good uh, protective food for cancer as well. And then the second, the third picture, it's a bagel with nuts and berries. And again, that could be a gluten-free um, yogurt that you put on there, and then that's a healthy breakfast. Okay. So now there are nutrients that have analgesic effects uh, that can help combat the neuropathic pain. So of course, we talked about vitamin E and we also talked about omega-3 fatty acids. Both of those compounds, they desensitize the central nervous system, which is a good thing. Now, what kind of foods are you gonna find that have these compounds? We talked about the flaxseed, the, the sunflower seeds, the nuts, the vegetable oils, and of course, the freshwater fish. So here's a sample of a menu that is to that will reduce pain for anyone that has a chronic condition or has cancer um, or that kind of thing. And if you notice, it's plant-based. So for breakfast, you have mixed fruit. I've got like a mixed fruit salad. Or you can also add a vegetable omelet and have some tea and some water as well. Then for your morning snack, if you need a morning snack, you've got celery, peanut butter, or you can have gluten-free crackers and chips, or you can even make those yourself. And then you can uh, have that with gluten-free cream cheese. They have a whole bunch of gluten-free cream cheese, which are really nice. And then for lunch, you can have your stir fry with mixed vegetables and tofu. And then for dessert, you have your fruit smoothie, add some nuts and raisins in there, and you've got your little sweet sweetness, and that will satisfy you for the rest of the afternoon. And then for your snack, it can be a fish wrap with spinach, tomatoes, avocados, and some lemon juice. And then for dinner, you can have a grilled fish, salmon or halibut, remember from the smash, and have that with potatoes and uh, spinach. So in summary, uh, one can help manage their pain level by switching to a plant-based diet or menu. We talked about the different foods that can cause more pain and those that can reduce the different types of pain. And we also looked at a menu that puts everything together. So as studies continue in the field, we know that a plant-based diet 
is the way to go. And thank you very much for having me. And please let me know if you have any questions. Well, first of all, we'll throw it out for anybody who might have some questions, because you know I always have several. So uh, I'll let anybody who would like to lead off. Anyone? Anyone? Would you, uh, if you'll just stop sharing your screen. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. So um, I have a question for you. And let me start the video here. Uh, okay. Um, so um, I'm going to I'm gonna vote yes that you cannot eat the way you did when you were a kid as you get older. <laughs> and I think most of us find that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, how do you fall on supplements um, as, a, as a nutritionist? Um, I think supplements are good, but that will be, but I would rather you get it from the actual foods themselves. Because from the actual foods themselves, you're getting other additional compounds in there. So in the fruits and the vegetables, you have compounds that they call flavonoids. Flavonoids also have cancer properties. When you go to the supplements, they only have one or two elements in there. It isn't a whole big picture that contains all these different compounds that the body needs. And we're still investigating other compounds that could be beneficial in the foods. We haven't discovered everything yet. So there's still going to be other additional compounds in there that are going to be beneficial for our bodies. Did that make sense? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Other questions? I got one, Amy. Okay. All right. So first, I would just give a wholehearted thumbs up and yes. Uh, this is this is right in line with what we do. My wife and I do is health coaching. Okay. Um, if you uh, haven't seen the Game Changers Netflix video, that is the best Netflix movie out there that brings plant-based eating to a high. Um, my my question here is um, one: I'd love your PowerPoint so I could take it to the grocery store with me next time I go shopping. Um, so if you if you're willing to let me have it, you can email it to Raymond and he'll get it to me. Yes, um, that was that was wonderful. I'm curious, when did you start the shift for your health? Um, how long ago did you begin to recognize things personally for you? And uh, how has that adapted or changed? And I'm going to guess in the last 10 years. Um, I actually. uh saw the difference when I was young also. Um, as you can tell, my accent is very English. I grew up in England, but I'm originally from Africa. And in Africa, everything is organic. There's nothing processed and all of that. So, um, and I also have a chronic condition. So my parents realized when we moved to England that I did better with African food. Um, so we stayed with African food in our household. And that actually helped me a lot uh, as a child growing up in England. And in England, too, they're very health conscious as well. And so we were still maintaining the health consciousness uh, and uh, also doing the lifestyle stuff. Um, it's common. <laughs> to go for walks on Saturdays and Sundays. And it's common to walk and get the bus uh, and not, you know, drive everywhere. So that was part of the lifestyle we lived in England. It was coming here when I saw there was a difference. Um, but I still kept with what had worked for me. And what also helped the the doctorate that I got was in lifestyle and chronic disease management at, at Loma Linda. And so this was adding the science to what I was doing and how it helped me. And um, so that really solidified it to me, for me. Um, and it, it started explaining things, you know, you know, every time I drank Coke or if I ate a hamburger, I would kind of feel okay, but then I'll feel crappy afterwards. Why was that? And th th this program I went in, 
explained that to me. So we had to take like a year's worth of nutrition. Then we had to take anatomy and physiology and understand how those two work together. So we even took uh, nutritional biochemistry to understand at the molecular level how food works in the body and what it does to the body. So all of that explained things to me, um, why I was still doing the African food, why that was important for me, and all of that helped. Did that make sense? Okay. Other questions? So I have a question, and, and if there's any science behind this, because I've experienced, there is a difference between what I want to eat and what my body wants to eat. And there are times when I'll go, I want a banana. I take a, a deep craving, or I want tomatoes, or I want this. Is there science behind that? There are bodies telling us you should be eating this? Uh, not necessarily. Um, usually that we can have cravings, which is fine. Uh, but at this point, we can now differentiate what is good for us and what is not. Okay. So we can have cravings and that's fine. But we need to, you, we need to eat the healthier option. And that craving will go away. By the way, cravings only last for 90 seconds. That's, so a, you, long, that's a long 90 seconds, let me tell you that. <laughs> But I, I was there's there's a difference to me in my experience between a craving and something I just think I got to have um, as far as I, I'll, I'll say, oh, my body really wants this. My body wants this. It's not a craving. It's uh, I just wondered that somebody had experimented around with that. Um, I haven't found any studies on that. Ra Ra Raymond, you're going to get fined 20 bucks for trying to get the doctor to give you permission to do whatever your body tells you to do. <laughs> I tell you what, I tell you what, Casey, I would I would be 30 pounds thinner if I followed my body's advice uh, rather than uh, uh, what I do. But OK, uh, so last question for me. Uh, you talked about chronic condition pain. What about injury pain? Uh, you know, you you sprain something. Is this diet also effective with that kind of pain? Actually, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Also with injury pain. Um, so from the. Uh, the flow chart where I had the different types of pain. Mm -hmm. One of those pains also talked about uh, injury pain of the internal organs. Uh, and that could be through, you know, hurting yourself or going through surgery. Um, so they are different foods that will help with um, uh, uh, those injuries, uh, I guess, getting better at a, faster rate so uh, so a lot of people who are who go through surgery one of the things they suggest is to have a lot of protein because that will help with the healing process mm -hmm. and you could heal at a faster rate just Excellent. one more fact i, I just want to share with people uh, those who are still eating saturated fats at a high amount uh, studies have shown that saturated fats can affect your genes. Yeah. So if they affect your genes, that it gets means... tighter when I when I eat saturated fats. Is that what we're talking about? Huh? <laughs> I said my <laughs> genes get tighter when I wear saturated. No, <laughs> not those genes. <laughs> See, your Steve, DNA I went there too, but I didn't say anything. Your DNA genes. Ah, so okay. it will affect those that at an uh, at a later stage. Yeah you could end up with more chronic conditions like dementia, yes. diabetes, heart disease, and all of that. Well, Dr. Nyanzi, thank you so much for a fabulous and informative presentation. And, and Ms. Ness, thank, thank you also you. for being here. Um, I'm going to turn it right over to our fine master because after what Steve said, I think I'm off the hook now. <laughs> so fine master. Well, Raymond, Raymond, real quick, before we move off, I just I always have to say this anytime I speak to somebody from City of Hope. Um, 25 years ago, my father was diagnosed with stage, stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was given about a 10% chance to live. He is alive today because of City of Hope. So I am grateful for all of the amazing work that you do. So thank you so much.
Absolutely. Well, thank you, Steve. Um, that doesn't get you out of the jeans comment. So. Oh, it totally <laughs> gets him out of the jeans comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so let's turn over to the fine master so we can uh, get out of here on time. That's my promise. Thank you. All right. Let's find ourselves and celebrate what we're doing. Uh, anybody that's eaten anything since we started this this one program today, I want you to raise your hand and find yourself $5. If you ate something other than what was on the menu, uh, you're being fined. <laughs> Anybody else want to find themselves? Go ahead. I, I was eating almonds. Uh, you can't see that, but uh, they are, uh, you know, sprinkled with sriracha chili. So I, I don't think that really counts, but it was on the list. Uh, hey, I, you Go ahead, Steve. Casey, you, I think you guys know that part of my lunch on a daily basis is raw spinach. So today during the meeting, I had raw spinach, I had almonds, and I had a suja organic juice with water, strawberry, raspberry, lemon, and honey. But I'll find myself because that's about as healthy as I'm ever going to be. So that's 10 bucks. You got it, Steve. Sean, uh, Sean and Glenn, you haven't had the joy of being around Steve for lunch for years. Uh, we have ribbed him for many, many times about what he eats or what he doesn't eat. Uh, but Steve, I just affirm uh, your choices have done you well. Uh, so congratulations on that. Anybody else has a, f a fine for themselves today? What is fine? What is not fine? Uh, what would you like to be fine? Uh, I I will find myself an additional five dollars. I, I will I will take the uh, the sriracha almond five dollar fine. But uh, I'm also going to find myself five dollars. Um, normally it would be more because it's not fine. But uh, for the third year in a row, I bought Halloween candy and had zero trick or treaters. So if anyone would like Halloween candy. Uh, it is unopened, and I can drop it off right on your doorstep. Maybe Sean Casey, maybe that can be uh, something that uh, can be given out to SHAP students who, you know, do well, or I, I don't know. But uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure as they go home at the end of the day, they'd be happy to resource them with candy, but just not during the day. Um, <laughs> I got I got my non uh, my non sriracha almonds, uh, but there's these little chocolate akashi berries. But she did say berries were good; they just happened to be covered in chocolate. I think that's a that's an oops, but uh, it's all good. Any other finds we got going on today? I'm gonna find myself too for the wonderful meal that I had uh, earlier uh, a cheeseburger on the go. So I'm guilty as charged. Yikes. That was a, it was a great presentation. We just had such quality speakers and we've got another uh, a couple of quality speakers coming up. Um, so let's move into Action 36. You've got about nine minutes. Let you know tonight at the Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support, their speaker is retired two-star general Peter Gravitt, who I spoke to on the telephone yesterday at length. What a fantastic, interesting guy uh, in charge of the 84 Olympics uh, for the National Guard. Uh, went full time and uh, he enlisted. So he started out as an E1 and made it all the way to I don't know, what's that? Oh, nine, maybe it might not see okay? at least maybe oh, seven or oh, eight um, as an officer, two star general. Um, but uh, it's going to be a great uh, presentation, I, I believe, on his part. Uh, the raffle, I said, coming to a close about a month ago. So you need to sell the raffle tickets, get the ticket subs into me. Uh, there are no major events between now and the holiday extravaganza where as a club we can sell them so it's up to you as individuals going on foundation hey yesterday we received our tax exempt status from the state of california we applied for that nine months ago <laughs> but it was backdated to the date of the irs exam exemption so we are actually all perfect uh, it's actually almost time to refile our statements again so that's weird with the state um 2026 committee has met uh and they're they're going to be meeting quarterly meetings quarterly beginning the next year. If you're interested in participating, um, let me know. Satellite Rotary Club of Military Family Support has got the food drive off the dime, and that's excellent. Mike and I are co-chairs of that. Our decision was to, to wind back, you know, and I said this early on, we're trying to do something that no one's ever done before, that is form a Satellite Rotary Club of, uh, uh, in this issue. And number two, trying to solve a problem no one's been able to solve, which is 
um, stocking a food bank permanently on a military base. So there are blind alleys there, burned out bridges. We burned some of the bridges ourselves, apparently. Uh, and you know what? And the bridges that we burned, I'm glad we did. We were kind of waiting for them to set themselves on fire, and they did. Uh, and uh, so we've taken that over and moved it forward. The uh, date of the next, I think it's March 12th, there are four committee meetings between now and then. If you as club Rotarians would like to be on that, uh, we did a little parliamentary trick. They're acting as a committee of a whole, as a club to work on this project. And so our idea, Mike and I, was to go back and we need to teach them to be Rotarians and then how to organize an event and really hold their hands all the way through. So Mike and I have taken on a lot of work but I think it'll pay dividends as we grow Rotarians and get people going down the right path. So um, that's where we stand on that. Thank you very much, Mike, for stepping up. I certainly appreciate that. The Marine Corps Benefit Dinner is a week from tomorrow. Man, I'm glad we're sold. We're oversold, Glenn. Sorry very much. Um, I don't, you know, we'll have it. We've got a couple of mayors coming, all kinds of dignitaries. Um, we have a great program. The speaker is fabulous. Um, and we're lucky. I told him, don't get hit by a bus. The last two died. So uh, he's being very careful. Um, so that's really good. That's all set. Fashion show. We did have a committee meeting. Uh, we have a date for the fashion show in June. Um, and so Diva's moving forward pretty rapidly. I have sent her a bunch of stuff, trying not to overwhelm her, but trying to get her moving in the right direction. The first next thing we want to see from her is a simple agenda. Um, we do have a Facebook uh, event made up for it already, and it's already in the chamber event, um, but we're using those as a skeletal foundation for her to work from. We're certain this is going to go off and it'll be a brunch fashion show. Um, we really need people to participate for ideas right this time because it's something we've not done before and it'll be the very last thing of my term. Lastly, C's is out there, uh, www.supportrotarians.com if you are so inclined. Uh, quick look at the yes go ahead Mike sorry um, with the C's is there a date um, like a, a start date of when they come Christmas wrapped it is yes and we had to wait for that and it, they are now Christmas wrapped as they are shown okay. on that website perfect all right thank you no no problem good question okay so we've got uh, let's see coming up Next week is a board meeting. I will get the agenda out. Um, one of the things I want you to think about, there's been a, a request to think about changing the date and or time of the regular Rotary Club meetings, because there are people who are having difficulties with Wednesdays at noon. You know, we meet via Zoom. Uh, is there a better time for everybody? And that's my simple question that I'd like to kick around, um, because if we can, you know, uh, get more people to the meetings, it would be great. If we want to keep Wednesday, that's fine by me, too. But I'd like to have a conversation about it at the next board meeting. We have a lot going on, so please be there. Um, and then you can see we've got the next thing is I need to know from you. Do you want to do on the 8th the club assembly, which is the holiday party? Because we've got I've gotten no suggestions from anybody on where you want to go. I don't necessarily want to go back to High Point Brewery. We, we were pretty much beating that up and we're there all the time. Um, you know, we have gone to Zendejas in the past. Um, that's a little noisy, but I don't care. Do you want to do holiday party? So that's a board discussion, I think, on the 9th. If you don't want to do one, that's cool with me, too. Um, I will tell you that we need to be together in person a couple of times a year, at least on projects and on club assemblies, because Zoom, we all know each other really, really well, and that's what's holding us together but it's not holding new people in if we're not meeting in person. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody. So let's talk about that. Other than that, I will begin to calendar out speakers for the next year. If there's somebody you'd like to have as a speaker, um, I actually haven't, I think I got an astronaut that's going to come. So um, I'm pretty excited about having an astronaut. So that'd be kind of cool. Uh, any questions about the calendar? Anybody have anything they'd like to bring up before we close out the meeting? Just the uh, the holiday extravaganza. Are we planning to do the coffee evening again and be out there? We also have the drawing that night. So just kind of touching base with everybody on December 3rd. I would, yes, I would like to do the coffee. Um, I think we need to reach out to the city. I would like, you know, to do the drawing up on stage or something uh, if we can this year. 
I planted that seed uh, with Latoya, uh, who's kind of overseeing it. I didn't know if we wanted to ask um, Sylvia to help us out with that as well. So, if you will move forward with Clatch because you have the best relationship and give them the date and time, uh, I will. I have the pop up and I have it in my calendar as a a be there. I'm going to actually, I have to burn off somebody else, but I will be there. So I could use also help work in the booth. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, I need more information on this, but um, our Interact Club president uh, kind of reached out on her own to, um, to be a camp counselor at TLC, which is the, the middle school eighth grade um uh leadership camp um i her information was submitted as uh, an applicant i don't know if there is a charge to be a camp counselor or if that's something that you know we pay for the campers and and that's a volunteer position if there is um we can discuss whether or not we would like to pay for that or, um, but I, I haven't heard anything else. Um, I, I spoke with Regatta, who's on the committee for TLC, and she was able to get me the formal application uh, to be a camp 